Hi, I'm Simon Crafer. We're in the Factory Aprilia garage for the next Tech Talk. In a previous Tech Talk, we spoke about bike balance, weight distribution, and an important part of bike balance is springs and preloads. And we didn't touch on that, but that is the subject of today's Tech Talk. Let's start with the front. So, front springs you have is what spring rate you have. Imagine we're going to go soft, okay? So in the two forks we'll have say seven, eight, something like this. Say there's an eight, eights in the front. But because the front forks are bolted together with the front wheel, it's a combination of what you have. So for example, you can run an eight and a nine and the total is eight five and there's no problem with that. It's cool, same as preloads. It's a combination of the two. So again, imagine we've got soft springs in here. What'll happen is mid-turn, the bike will ride over the bumps really well, like at full lean. It'll soak up those bumps and uh, give the rider confidence, you know, to, to go over the bumps fast, good grip. Then drive out of the corner, fly down the straight. When he brakes, those soft springs will compress easier. So you've got a lot of weight transfer. It's difficult to stop. The rider's going to complain that other, bi other bikes can, and riders can outbreak him. And uh, yeah, that's the main problem. Then imagine we have hard springs in there. Go the other extreme. Say you've got 14 in there. So Newton meters this is. So with these 14 Newton meter springs through the mid turn, as you go over bumps, it's going to like give the rider the feeling that the tire is going to let go. It doesn't absorb, like, doesn't absorb these bumps, lack of grip. He'll either crash or he'll feel like he's going to crash and have to slow down, which is not what you want. He'll get to the end of the straight after driving off the turn, brake, brake like a demon, no problem because there's not too much weight transfer. Then turn into the corner as he turns in at a half lean hard on the brakes. There's a certain point where the springs are harder than the tire. Imagine everything from that bike is pushing on the springs, pushing on the tire. The, the tire will start to squash, you know, and deflect. And the problem with that is when he turns in, it'll feel like dad's car when you drove it too hard, you know, like the front will just push, understeer, and then, uh, yeah, he'll run wide, not be able to turn. So there's a compromise between the super soft, super hard. So imagine then we go softer on the spring, somewhere in the middle, and the way that these genius engineers have got around it is to put preload on the springs. So basically how much you compress the spring, and Mike's gonna be kind enough here to put some preload on the front fork. So imagine that spring sitting there with no preload on it. Now Mike turns one, every turn, two, every turn on there is a millimetre that it's compressing the spring inside the fork. So the feeling for the rider is that it feels harder and higher, so changing the balance of the bike. But because it feels harder, you can, there's less tra tra transfer to the front, um, you can brake better, but when you're braking better and you turn into the corner, the tyre feels a softer spring rate, so it doesn't compress the tyre. It doesn't matter how much preload you put on it, only the rider feels it, not the tyre, which is great. So imagine then we've gone extreme on the preload. We go up to say 12, 14, um, at, then the bike's going to feel topped out at the front. Bring. The problem with that is, is as you get on the throttle off the corner, the front is topped out already. The front easily comes off the ground. Then you get the wheel turning, instability. You see that the bike's head shake, really not confident for the rider. So then the way they've got around this is ingenious. It's to put what you call a top out spring in there. So the top out spring works and the little spring at the top as much preload as you put on the main spring, it comes up you know, harder and harder and no sag. But as the fork extends, fully extends as you drive off the corner, it works against the top out spring, which means no matter how much preload you put on, it always feels like you've got a bit of sag and it keeps the front on the ground. 
How cool is that? Everybody's happy. Bike balance, drive off the corner, tyres happy on the way in, turn over the bumps, fantastic. There's one more piece of the puzzle, and that is in where the spring goes, it's called the area is called an air gap. And if you put some oil in there, totally separate from the damping system, if you put some oil in there, it reduces the air gap, gets smaller. So the air can compress, but the oil can't. So maybe say you go up five mil higher on the oil, what happens is the fork that dives on the brakes to gets towards the bottom, it gets harder because it starts, the air gap gets smaller and it can't compress the oil, so the fork gets harder at the bottom. So you can control all the areas of the fork. It's absolutely ingenious. So let's now go to the rear and we'll have an explanation on that. Okay, on the rear shock, which is buried in, in the bike here, we've got this spring and the same thing. How about we run through the same, uh, imagine we've got a soft spring in the bike goes over those bumps really well mid-turn, gives the rider confidence, good grip. As soon as he starts to drive, when he gets you know, a little bit up off the edge and going, then it's warm in this garage. A little bit off the edge of the tyre, hard acceleration, the weight will come back onto that rear spring and squash it. The problem with that, too much, too much rear transfer, is it changes the geometry, puts more weight on the back, Apart from wheelie off the corner, it runs wide because the geometry's got more towards the back, so it's running off the track. No good. If it wheelies, you've got to shut the throttle, not what you want. So imagine then we've got a really hard spring in there, super hard spring. You can drive off the corner as hard as you want, but the problem is the spring doesn't move like the front. It squashes the tyre instead. You know, so the tyre gets overworked, compresses, there's no damping in the tyre, so you get pumping, the rear is unstable, overworks the rear, last thing you want towards the end of the race. So, in between is a spring in between, but again, putting preload on the spring, which is on the shock. And again, Mike's going to show us how to put preload on this um, rear shock. Show us how it's done, Mike. In my day, First of all, there was a ring here that you turned that was directly, it was really hard work. Sorry, once more, Mike, is um, then, look at this, then it became a hydraulic that we wound a nut and you could compress it down. But this is pneumatic. So what Mike can do is put some pressure in there and then easily turn it. So we're winding each turn as a mill, I'm guessing, on these ones. And then release it and you've put more compression on the spring. How cool is that? So exactly the same. We get more and more compression on the spring, or preload, sorry, on the spring. The problem is it's topped out. You know, as soon as you hit the brake, it's floating a little bit. Again, we've got a top out spring that they fit inside that shock, it works again. So it always feels like at the top of the shock, it gets a little bit softer. It's got some sag basically in there, no matter how much preload you put on, very cool. But the wild card, with the rear of the bike, first of all, there's two, two wild cards in here. The length of this swing arm. Imagine you need to sh change the gearing and we're going to change this rear sprocket at the back here for a bigger one so you lower the gearing. And if you do that, the, to get that bigger sprocket in, the axle needs to come forward. It's quite forward now, you can see. If we put a smaller one in, the, w the axle needs to come back. The, th the problem is the length of that swing arm here it affects the amount of leverage. You man imagine if you go shorter, the spring's going to feel harder. If you go longer, the spring will feel softer because there's more leverage in there. The engineers know how to calculate that in and keep the rider happy and try and make it feel the same. Whether it's with a small spring rate change or preload, they try and uh, calculate it. The other wild card is that on that swing arm, it doesn't push directly on the shock. The, the swing arm is hooked down here to a linkage and you can see it runs through to a triangle shaped link. We've got a little bit of a picture here of it. Say this triangle shaped link and there's a strut that comes off the swing arm. We'll, do, we'll draw it here. We've, we've done a bit of a drawing here. So the swing arm with the rear wheel, there's a, a strut that come off to the link and that pulls, that's mounted to the bike. When, it, when the swing arm pulls that, it pushes on the rear shock. And the, the cool thing about this is if you change the position of these holes, so you have different shaped links, you can make a 
suspension that is, for example, they call it a quite flat link. And that means the more the swing arm moves up, it doesn't get harder. It feels pretty much the same rate but all the way up. That's a real flat link. Or you can change the position of those holes and make a quite steep link. So it gets progressively harder. The more the swing arm moves up, it gets harder and harder. Much like we were doing with the oil in the front. And all of this that we've just spoken about is still nothing to do with damping, the damping system, which we'll do in a tech talk at a later date. Bye for now.